Welcome back to the Untriggered Parenting Podcast with me, Paula Samson Lawrence. My special guest today is Whitney Cardosi. Whitney is a health and wellness mentor and cooking instructor. Today we'll discuss how we can empower our children, especially girls, with positive body image through nutrition. Let's dive in. Welcome, Whitney. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I'd love to get you to introduce yourself to our listeners. Thank you so much, Paula. Thank you for having me. Um, Like you said, my name is Whitney Cardosi. I'm the owner and founder of Wellness with Wit. And I take the overwhelm out of filling the fridge and corralling the kitchen chaos for millennial moms. (laughs) So it's really my goal to bring more joy and less FML, as I say, when it comes to (laughs) health and cooking. Um, And I really help moms achieve this through a variety of ways. Um, First and foremost, with working directly with kids um, in cooking classes. And I work with kids ranging anywhere from um, two up to like our tweens and teens. Um, I do, uh, online coaching with parents, um, private cooking sessions. I have a free Facebook community, which I could share at the end. Um, and really just helping support moms in sort of their own journey and understanding of nutrition, gut health, and then also, um, bringing that to their, their families. And I have a, a passion for, working with girls in particular. I have two myself that are six and nine. So it's very close to my heart. Yeah. And I think that's great that you um, do that because it can seem like such a pressurizing thing to feed your family well, especially when you as a mother, maybe don't have a great relationship with food. And then you have this pressure of trying to change that for your children, your girls in particular, but you are still sort of struggling. Um, so I'd love to hear sort of with some of the mums that maybe you work with, is it sort of, it trickles down from the, the parent into the child or is it two sort of different ways that you tackle it, if that makes sense? Yeah, yeah, I would say a couple ways. And what I find is it's, yeah, there's obviously every family is a little bit different, but mm. I find it kind of falls into two categories. So you have the one category look that you just described where, the mom, I'm in a teen and tween group actually online. And and I find a lot of times the moms are saying that they have struggled their whole life with um, nutrition, whether it's weight or not. And so now they're trying to do better by their child, or they're starting to see those same habits in their kids. Or um, a lot of times it's women who are on their own health journey and who are learning um, about nutrition and it's eating healthy and they don't know how to cook for themselves on that journey and also incorporate that into their family. So then they find themselves fine um, cooking all these different meals because Mm -hmm. they have their particular diet for lack of a better term, they're following and then what everyone else is eating. So, um, so what I do is, um, like in my cookbook, for example, I try to create meals that are, um, are simple, delicious and something that you can, that the whole family can enjoy. Mm -hmm. Um, and, also, uh, sort of tackling, supporting their kids in a couple of ways. So I believe in the philosophy that like, and there's a lot of research. It's not just my, my philosophy. There's a ton of research stating that if you have your kids involved in the kitchen, they are, you know, exponentially more likely to eat the food that you're serving. So it's just this really getting back to the basics. We're so inundated with so much information when it comes to what's considered healthy eating. And we don't know how to talk about that with our kids. And and what I am trying to encourage is that it's actually much more simple than that. And if we really just got back to, especially here in the United States, Mm -hmm. eating more whole real food and less processed foods, that in and of itself is going to create healthier diets for our families and for our kids. And then also just getting back to the roots and the concepts of cooking and preparing our food. It just, it, there's so many healthy benefits to that. Like I said, first and foremost, they're more likely to eat the foods that they're, they're cooking. They're, they're more likely to eat it slower because they, they prepared it. There's just so much involved. So I try to weed through all of that, um, information that's out there online and social media. You know, when we were kids, I'm 40, almost 43. So for me, it was reading it in magazines, kind of weeding through all of that information and just sort of encouraging people just focus on cooking from home as much as you can. I know it's not realistic to do that every night and cooking more real whole food. And you're going to be doing so much more for your family just in that, that you don't have to worry about all those little things like 
carbs and, you know, all of that. It's, and if you're eating real food. Um, and then I also try to help with how to talk to their kids about that. Um, you know, like really trying to encourage them rather than focusing on, especially if you have a child who you feel like is struggling with weight for lack of a better term, or I, I had a woman just recently share in a group that her daughter was actually, um, self-conscious because she was so skinny and she was trying to put on more weight. And I said, instead of focusing on the size, um, Mm -hmm. and things like that, really focus on how does your child feel? Do they have energy throughout the day? Do they have gut issues? Like, do they, are they going to the bathroom regularly or does their stomach hurt often? Do they suffer from things like headaches? If that's the case, then you can probably go ahead and guess, and you can obviously seek medical advice, but that they are probably malnourished in some way. And that then you can focus on the nutrients and just let's focus on protein. Let's focus on, you know, making you feel your best. And then at least we know that you're feeling your body and your, your physical body will adjust and transform the way that it should, um, naturally because everybody's different, obviously. Yeah, definitely. And, um, when you were talking, then I was thinking about just how young girls in particular feel about their bodies in general and how obviously society has certain expectations. And so how do we sort of link that to nutrition? Because I think that um, when it comes to young girls, they do know that nutrition affects how their body looks, but it's more in an unhealthy way. It's more about cutting things out as opposed right. to having a whole diet. So I'd love to hear you talk about that and um, some of the unhealthy misconceptions that maybe young girls, maybe you know us adult women too, have about nutrition, how it pertains to a healthy body? Yeah. I mean, there's probably a long list of what people are consuming, <laughs> especially young generations now. Of course, it's mostly going to be from social media, but yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, it's funny because I spent really the first seven or eight years of, of my business um, coaching adult women. Mm-hmm. And, and what I found was that um, the really, because most of the women I was working with were probably in like their thirties or forties, many of them, but not all were moms. And, and over the years, as I had sort of tweaked, you know, sort of what I was coaching, um, in terms of like the programs, what Mm -hmm. I found was no matter what I was coaching them on, and it never varied greatly because it was always just rooted in whole food and, and anti-inflammatory eating, but, um, that the challenge was always in their mind. It was always unraveling, the diet dogmas that we gain along our lifetimes, right? Whether it was because we were eighties kids and we grew up in the the low fat era or, <laughs> you know, it, it, we went through this phase where it was everything that we ate was fake. It was margarine instead of butter. It was, you know, Splenda or whatever, sweet and yeah. low instead of sugar. And, and mm. so really understanding like the effects that that was having on our hormones and on our brain and on our gut health and all of those things. And so what the kids are young generation are consuming now, I mean, who knows, right? There's so much information out there. And so kind of, I touched on at the end of that last thing is really mm-hmm. just focusing on, um, really again, just focusing on the basics. Like I know it sounds overly simplistic, but just reminding them of the main food groups. And I, I'm not talking about the food pyramid that we have here in the United <laughs> States, but more just really basic, like protein, healthy fats, car- healthy complex carbs, um, and of course, vegetables and produce and things like that. What are they? What purpose do they serve? So like I do cooking camps in the summer, every day we go each through each one of those food items and kind of talk about the importance um, and how you're getting that from real food. Um, but ultimately, really, my goal is, and, and I try to teach this to adult women and my friends mm-hmm. too, which is always bring it back to how do you feel? Like, how do you feel? Do you wake up feeling energized? Like, these are the things, these are the signals that your body's and, and really telling them that like, you don't need to read anything. You could, you could live without a label the rest of your life. If you just listened to what your body was telling you. Um, and so in my own girls, for example, after like dinner, for example, if we have a, a, what I would consider a fairly healthy meal. So last night we grilled steak, we had some salad on the side and the girls and some brown rice pretty balanced and healthy. Um, Mm -hmm. and so when I see them after that have energy and be in a good mood, like I will point that out to them and say, notice how we had that really nice balanced meal and you're feeling really good right now. Or earlier in the day, 
after the beach, my kids had some candy. My oldest was complaining of a headache. And I said, I don't know if it's related to that, but just keep that in mind. Like you just had sugar, probably had artificial dyes in there. Not a big deal. It doesn't mean we can't have that, but just listen to your body and like notice that. Um, and I think we lose because we're so focused on reading and listening to what everyone's saying is that we're listening to all these outside um, yeah. cues and signals and we're not tuning into our body. So I just try to encourage them, focus on what your body's telling you. It's It will always tell you what you need. It's funny you say that because um, I think that's such important advice in general, especially yeah. for young people. What is your body telling you? What is your gut telling you? What is, yeah. you know? Yeah, <laughs> listen to intuition, yeah. Intuition, exactly. And I think, um, I've said this before, but sometimes we as parents have sometimes uh, limited their ab our children's ability to mm. follow their intuition. Because yes. when they're young, for example, we might have said, you have to finish everything on your plate. Mm -hmm. You have to, even though when the, they say they're not hungry, we say, well, you must be hungry because you've not eaten since you know, whatever time. And in our mind, we've got to make sure they're having breakfast, lunch, or dinner at this Yes. Time. So we've kind of done a little bit of work of on doing that, that whole, oh, and totally. listening to, to their body, to their gut, to their intuition. And now some, then we have to sort of circle back and go, how do you feel? And then yeah. they're sort of like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's so true. And I remember one of the most liberating things I ever read was, maybe I saw it on social media. I don't know. But they said most kids, and I forget what the age range was, but it was probably, you know, up till teenage or something like most kids will have one good meal a day. Um, and that was so helpful for me because I now it's like, OK, I know if they have a really big, healthy breakfast, then the rest of the day they might not eat a ton or whatever. But you're right. And and um, that is very hard. I, I think most of what we struggle with as parents is really what we, the rules that we're, we think we have to follow in our own mind and what most my parents with particularly younger kids, but older too, struggle with the, um, you don't have to finish your dinner, but then how do I handle dessert? Like that's always a big, um, challenge. And yes. so obviously every household <laughs> is different, but what we do here is like, if they really barely eat anything, then it's like, if you're hungry here shortly after, then you can have more of that same meal, that dinner. Mm -hmm. We don't really limit quote unquote dessert, but we just always have it be something, not always, but generally it's just something healthy. So an apple grapes, you know, something like that. Like if that, if that, if that's what they're going to eat and that's usually when they eat those foods, then I'm fine with that, you know? Um, and then we save kind of like the special desserts and treats for weekends or special occasions. But I think even again, like you said, as adults, those are the types of things where we have to use logic sometimes in, in our, in our brains yeah. more than like what rules we think we have to follow. I wonder how, you know, you would tackle that whole thing of healthy means restrictive because um especially in young minds um but sometimes even as a parent trying to make a healthy meal you start thinking what to take out to make it more healthy you know yeah. so how do we sort of combat that feeling of healthy does not necessarily mean restrictive yeah I think you know again that recently came up um and it I, for me, again, I just try to always bring it back to the concept around nutrient dense, you know, mm -hmm. and like really looking at if, if you're eating real, really just blatantly and bluntly explaining that, right? Like eating healthy does not mean necessarily, especially with kids, um, restricting to a certain amount of calories. Now, yes, be mindful of, of, you know, you be mindful of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, but the, the thing is, is if kids are eating or adults, if, you know, 80 to 90% of what we're eating is real whole food, it's mm. pretty hard to overeat. No one's, most people aren't on a regular basis sitting down and eating, you know, pounds and pounds of chicken or pounds and pounds <laughs> of broccoli. You know, I mean, if you are, then I'm sure that's probably something that you'd want to seek professional help yeah. on. But, um, but I, I think that's the thing is, is, um, where we're seeing adults and kids overeating is when it comes to the processed food. Um, and I, I'm not here to preach and, and say, don't ever consume that food because that's not realistic for most households. It's not for ours. Um, but if you're really just focusing on getting those key nutrients on the plate, then generally speaking, 
um, you know, you're not going to have to worry about how much you're eating, you're getting those nutrients that you need. And, um, and I think also, I always try to explain like the, what's in those processed foods, right? There's actual, because there's a lot of shame and guilt that comes with it too. And I've worked with, you know, especially adult women that are like, I just can't stop eating the chips. And it's like, well, that's because that's how they're actually made. They, yeah, there's something called, the, yeah, there's something called the bliss point that they, it, that this hits that is going to make you want to come back more and more. So just little things like that. But, uh, and I know it might sound overly simplistic and it's not anything crazy, but it's just always bringing it back to like, if you're really focusing on those key elements, particularly like things like protein, your kids yeah. are going to feel satisfied and they're not going to always constantly be going for the snacks and the things like that. And if it really is a problem, then, you know, um, you limit what you have in your house for that type of thing. But, um, you know, I think, what I find is that yes, they, they're more focused on, um, restricting their, they're using words like calories and things like that. But if they were just focusing more on like what they were eating, then it's less of a problem. Yeah, definitely. I would love, you mentioned nutrients, um, before, and I'd love to know for growing bodies, what are some of the key nutrients that we can focus on? If that mum is a little bit overwhelmed, especially if she's got, I don't know, like me, four kids and she's thinking, ah, bigger. you know, what could, what, what can we make sure we're hitting the plate most times of the, of the week that's really going to help like growing bodies? Yeah. I mean, I know I keep bringing the same thing up and I know it's a buzzword right now, but protein is always what I focus mm -hmm. on because it's what gives them the fuel and the energy yeah. to go, right. It's the fuel for their brain in the morning. You know, it's the only it's, we are made up of proteins and it's the only nutrient that we actually need in order to survive. Um, and so I think it, finding the the nutrients um, or finding the foods that carry protein that your kids enjoy is, mm -hmm. is really helpful. So for example, my six-year-old, she's not a huge meat eater. She doesn't love meat, but she does love peanut butter. She loves brown rice. She loves, um, you know, there's other other food groups that she'll eat that do have protein in it. So I try to always focus on that. She'll eat yogurt. Um, so she's, she kind of is my more of my plant-based protein, um, kiddo. And so I try to make sure that they're getting something like that. It's ideally in the morning, which I know is hard. Breakfast is, yeah. is hard, <laughs> um, especially during the school year and things like that. And then of course you have your obvious things like your chicken and your meat. So like my nine-year-old, she loves meat. So she's easy for me because, um, I can just serve her whatever meat yeah. that we're, I'm cooking for my husband and I, um, obviously if you're, you're not a meat eater, there's so many options out there when it comes to like beans and lentils and all that kind of stuff as well. Um, so that's the main thing that I really focus on and getting them to try vegetables and things like that is very important. It's mm -hmm. because, you know, they need those vital nutrients and they need those vitamins. But in my opinion, and I'm not a doctor, <laughs> um, I, I think for healthy growing kids, the protein is so much more important in my opinion. And it's yeah. also going to there, the good, the nice thing about it is it pays yeah. off and benefits the parent because it's also mm -hmm. going to stabilize their mood. And so that makes life easier too. When you don't have those hangry kids, usually if you have kids, um, you just, you know, we, we were at the beach yesterday. So my six-year-old was very hangry last night, <laughs> like not using the best language. And, mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, just really focusing on getting that, that protein in there. Um, and, and especially when it comes to snacks too, like mm -hmm. that's where I feel like we, our kids struggle because, yeah. you know, they come from home, home from school, for example, and they're hangry, they're starving oh, okay. and they grab <laughs> immediately for the chips. And yeah. so what we do is, is I am like, that's fine. You can have those because I know that's probably like what you're craving, but also like, let's make sure you have some string cheese with that or a yogurt or peanut butter on toast, or, you know, just something that's going to balance that out. So that that's really what I focus on. And like I said, it's nice as a parent because you enjoy the benefits of, mm -hmm. of that as well. And they're just going to overall perform better in life when it comes to school and, and sports and things, not that that's the goal, but Mm -hmm. Um, that's, what's going to affect their muscles and all of those things yeah. too. And it's going to allow their body to naturally, um, not limit necessarily, but like, you know, it's not, they're not going to overeat on like the French fries and all those mm -hmm. kinds of things that they're focusing first and foremost mm -hmm. on those, those pro healthy proteins. Before we get to the last couple of questions, I did just want to say a special little mention 
to any listeners out there who have children who have who are neurodiverse because we know that it's not <laughs> it's not easy and sometimes some of the things that we're saying you might go ah my, I can't get my child to eat that I can't get my child to do that and that is okay textures might bother them smells might bother them so if you do have a child who's eating the same thing five six times a week or and it's not as healthy as you think well we do what we can <laughs> yeah absolutely and also not everyone has the luxury to afford, you know, even the time to be able to like cook fresh meals. And I, I totally agree with that. In which case then it's really just comes down to having those healthy conversations, yeah. doing the best that you can, um, and always opting like for your, your best possible option. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's, it's much easier. It's easy to talk about in a conversation like this, but yeah, when push comes to shove and yeah. <laughs> you're a mom, you know, a, a working mom, or even not, even if you are home with your kiddos and you're just at the end of the day and struggling, you know, it's like, sometimes it's breakfast for dinner. So just finding yeah. <laughs> those, those easy options, you know, um, but yes, it's such a great point. Do what you can. It's true. So, um, finally to wrap up. What is one key message that our listeners can take away um, just to you know, empower them about nutrition and mental wellness, b- body positivity, and pass that on to sort of our daughters and our children in general? What's one thing that we can all do as a family that we can take away from this episode? I think, you know, um, first and foremost, which I kind of mentioned at the beginning, and again, there there is so much research behind this, but the more that we can to prepare and cook food at home. And I know I just said, that's not always realistic. And I get that. If that means one time a month for you, because that's what you can do, then that's something it's still that, that quality time. There's so many benefits around there uh, our relationships together as humans, but also our relationship with food. Um, mm-hmm. And I think, especially for moms, if we're focusing more, like I've said many times on helping our kids understand and listen to their body and how they feel, Um, would probably be like my biggest passion point Um, and focusing on, on that relationship with food Um, and really understanding that food is here to nourish us and fuel us. Um, And it, and generally speaking, although we've done a lot with science, but if it grows from the earth, like it was put here for a reason um, Mm. to give us, you know, nutrients and just to be grateful for that. And however you show that, um, you know, over your food, but looking at it as, as a, a source of nutrients and helps us keep going as opposed to, you know, um, good or bad, or, um, you know, like just, I think so many of us just really struggle with our relationship with food. So really becoming more intuitive, appreciating, you know, what our earth can give us in real food and, um, and, and just really talking about it and being open about it, um, is so important. Absolutely. So before I let you go, please tell us how we can connect with you and learn more about you online. Thank you. I would say the best pace to really like get what I'm sharing and um, get what I'm throwing down is on Instagram, which is just Whitney underscore Cardosi. Um, I'm actually the same on on all platforms. So um, TikTok, although I'm not as op- uh, active on there. I also have a free wellness group and I can share the link with you, Paula, but um, on Facebook um, and it's called Corralling the Kitchen Chaos. Um, and oh. you can find that, uh, yeah, by just searching that on Facebook, or you can just look for my main profile, Whitney Cardosi, and then it's linked in there. Um, and then my website, um, is WhitneyCardosi.com. So all very easy on there. You can check out, um, you know, any, uh, digital resources and products that I have, uh, for parents, how we can work one-on-one. And if you happen to be local in the <laughs> North shore Boston area, any local cooking classes that I'm doing and, um, and I'm hoping to do more with that virtually as well over time. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I'm definitely going to be more mindful about my dinner. (laughs) (laughs) But thank you so much for coming on. And that was lovely to speak to you. Thank you so much. You too, Paula. Have an awesome day. Thanks for listening and I'll see you next time.